Good morning, and welcome to our morning worship service here at Locust Grove in D.C. in North Pennsylvania. Please join me in the call to worship. Lent calls us to journey this and every day, following Jesus wherever he leads us. And Lent calls us to journey to the place where God comes us. Lent calls us to worship together to tell future generations the good news. Lent calls us to practice justice to bring God's hope to all people. Lent calls us to faithful living to trust the one who gives us life. Lent calls each of us to take up our hearts to trust the one who bears it with us. Lent calls us to journey with God. Let us worship God who walks with us this and every day.
join me in the opening prayer. Be our guide, O Lord, on our Lenten journey. Help us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow you. Help us to follow where you lead us this Lent. We welcome where you lead us in this service and in our lives, where we will follow. In Jesus' name we pray.
scripture lesson for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For, the, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Take this to heart this week. Good morning. Good morning. Let us go before our Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we're so thankful that we can gather in your name today and that we can gather to worship you and to thank you for your loving presence in our lives. We ask that in this service today that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts through the words of song, through the words of scripture, and through the words you've given me and may all that we say and all that we do bring you honor and glory and praise. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Mark Twain once wrote, It ain't those parts of the Bible that I can't understand that bother me. It is the parts that I do understand. I would imagine... We can all relate to that. For there are many parts of the Bible, even biblical scholars aren't sure how to fully interpret. But then there are those passages that are so plain, so clear, and so easy to read, we can't miss them. And they are often the ones that bother us too. Especially the ones that challenge us, that make us uncomfortable. Those are the ones we need to deal with, yet, often, we want to avoid them. And that's where we are today. For these verses from the 8th chapter of Mark are not easy to read and even more challenging to follow. But we need to begin a few verses before this passage where we find Jesus asking his disciples, who people and they are saying he was. Peter, of course, gave the right answer, you are the Messiah. Peter, you know, had his own definition of what he meant by that. For Peter and the other disciples, Messiah meant the answer to their prayers, the answer to their problems. The Messiah would make everything right. Like a warrior, he would come in and take care of the Romans and their lives would be easier. He would save them. Then everything changed when Jesus told them what was going to happen, how he would be treated, how he would die, and then rise again. It is no wonder that Peter rebuked Jesus, that he took him aside to set him straight. It's surprising that Peter would rebuke his teacher and rabbi, but this was too much for him. He felt he had no choice, and Jesus had no choice but to set Peter right. You see, it is here in this chapter of Mark that everything changes, 
as Jesus calls the disciple and the crowd to him and explains just what it means to be his follower. He explains what it means to bear as one's cross. If anyone would come after me, they must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will find it. Here comes those verses. We wish we didn't understand, but we do. Jesus is asking them and us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. We know what it means to deny ourselves. Any parent, aunt, or uncle, or grandparent knows what it means to deny themselves. After all, we would deny ourselves anything if one of our children, nieces or nephews, or grandkids was in need. We would all deny ourselves anything to help a family member or a friend. Yet as a whole, we are not a culture that understands the concept of denying ourselves very well. We tend to be me first. It's almost a foreign concept for us. And yet I think the word is as relevant today as it was then. Jesus says we are to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Yet what can that mean for you and me? What can that cross be for us? How can we deny ourselves? Denying ourselves may cause pain and anguish. Denying ourselves may mean we do something because we know God wants us to do it, even if deep inside we'd rather do anything else. It means we follow Jesus where he leads us and calls us. I love how Reverend Sharon Blesser describes it. Following Jesus and denying self is about being all in. It's about a 100% commitment to use your gifts, skills, talents, and resources to share the gospel and live into God's reign right now. Following Jesus is about publicly proclaiming with your life's witness that Jesus matters more than anything else, and in him is the source and wellspring of abundant life. Life with Jesus at the center is full of the things that money, power, and prestige never provide. With Jesus comes real love, limitless hope, deep relationship, radical generosity, and true power in the upside-down, inside-out vision of God's ultimate design for this world. I love that she says we are all in. So ask yourself, how often do we do that? How often are we all in? Sometimes, most of the time, it's definitely something to think about and a goal to strive for. So what if we did that? What if each day we strive for that goal as we began the day? What if we consciously thought about how we could deny ourselves, carry our cross, as Jesus calls us to serve him every day? What if we went out the door looking through the eyes of faith to see how we could serve, even if it took us out of our comfort zone? Could it mean that we deny ourselves and give part of our money to help the poor and disadvantaged and buy that extra TV a little later? Could it mean that we deny ourselves and volunteer to help where the needs are greater, greater like at a food pantry or soup kitchen? Could it mean that we deny ourselves giving up something we love to be present for someone in need or distress? Maybe it means we would prepare a meal for someone we know who is struggling with health issues right now or we shovel the snow or mow the lawn or bake cookies for someone who is all alone. Maybe it is a calling. It is calling someone we haven't seen lately or someone we really don't get along with. Maybe it means we leave our comfort zone 
and pray with someone who really needs to know the love of Jesus. We share what our faith, our walk with Christ, means to us with them. And perhaps it will mean that you find ways to serve this church differently as you look for another pastor, perhaps even leading worship or writing bulletins, as you see the needs that arise as you wait and you help fill those needs. Pastor Fred Craddock once pointed out at an address to pastors that the reality for most Christians in this country is seldom a life and death matter as we carry our cross and follow Jesus. We think giving our all to the Lord is like laying $5,000 on, on a table, he says. Here's my life, Lord, I'm giving it all. But the reality for most of us is that he sends us to the bank and has us cash in that $5,000 for dollars. And we go through life pulling out $2 here or $5 here. Usually giving our life to Christ isn't glorious. It is done in those little acts of love, a dollar or five dollars at a time. Deny ourselves, carry our cross, and follow Jesus. We don't know where he will lead us or what we will need to do. It may be some act of sacrifice, or as Pastor Fred Craddock said, it may be in the little acts. Jesus, our Messiah, gave his all for you and me. He died on that cross for each and every one of us, and he calls us to deny ourselves, carry our cross, and follow him. Wherever he leads, wherever. Striving to follow 100% all in as his disciples. We may not feel comfortable with this passage of scripture that we understand, like Mark Train wrote, but we don't have to be. We just need to follow our Savior who calls us to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Amen. We have a rose on the altar today to celebrate the birth of Aurora Grace, and she's the daughter of Kevin and Rachel, and grandparents, of course, are Sam and Robert, Robin, and there's Uncle Derek and Aunt Sarah. I'm trying not to use last names. <laughs> but And she is a baby that absolutely adorable. I've never seen a little one with that much hair. <laughs> Sweetheart. I'm sure Robin will show pictures if you haven't seen them yet, right, Robin? She's got a lot, I'm sure. So that is a true blessing right there. Charlie asks that we pray for his knee. He's having a lot of difficulty getting around. His knee is acting up, and hopefully at his doctor's appointment this week or next week? Next week, he'll get some word. Uh, let's continue to pray for Carson and Oh, thank you. I'm not lighting candles. You're right. <laughs> Every once in a while, it goes out of the brain. Golly. <laughs> okay. Continue to pray for Carson and Linda. Carson and his treatment and Linda and her therapy. And, um, and healing for Rachel after the birth of her sweet dear baby. And Lindsay was sharing with me that um, Sean's family, a lot of family members are going through a lot. His mom is not doing well at all. And um, we need to really keep the family in prayer. His dad and his grandma both got some news this week too that's not easy to hear. They both have some serious health issues. So let's keep Sean and his family in our prayers. <laughs> And let's pray for peace in this world of wars all over. And, and I keep hearing about California and those atmospheric rivers, and the whole state was in trouble with flooding. So let's pray for people who are dealing with all of those issues. So let's go before our Lord in prayer. Lord, we can understand what Mark Twain said that the passages that we understand bother us the most. 
Because it's not always an easy thing to think of denying ourselves, picking up a cross of all things, and following you. We know what the cross means. It means sacrifice. It means maybe going so far out of our comfort zone. It makes us uneasy. But that's what you're calling us to do. You're calling us to take up that cross, deny ourselves, to put you first. I like what Pastor Sharon said, all in 100%. And you know we don't do that. None of us do. We strive to. Some days we probably don't strive to because life's hard, Lord. There's a lot going on. And we get so busy in the things that we do, we forget to think about picking up that cross, denying ourselves and following you in every circumstance, to see through the eyes of faith what you want us to see, and then to move and make a difference. It's easy for us to see things. The hard part comes when we deny ourselves, and that cross becomes doing whatever it is you call us to do. And maybe we're not comfortable doing some of the things we feel you laying on our heart, you urging us to do. But you remind us, Lord, that if we try to save our life the way we want it to be, we will lose it. We will become, we're your children, we're your followers. And we want our life to be what you call it to be, Lord. So give us the courage to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow you in all circumstances, Lord. Take away the fear, take away the worry, or help us to go in the midst of that. Because there will be times you will call us and we would want to do anything else. But that's what you call us to do. Help us to keep our eyes and ears and our heart open so that we will follow wherever you call us. We thank you, Lord, for little Aurora Grace, and for her family, and we pray that you bless her, Lord, and, and keep her strong and healthy, and we thank you for her. We pray that you would be with Charlie. I know he's having a lot of pain with his knee and difficulty getting around, and we pray next week at that appointment that he gets the help that he needs. And we pray for Carson, who is going through treatment, and for Linda, who's going through therapy, that you continue to bless them both with your healing. And we pray that you bring healing to Rachel after the birth of Aurora, and we pray that you continue to mend her as well. And we lift up Sean's family, and his mom, who's not doing well at all. And we pray for strength and comfort for peace. We pray for healing for Sean's dad and his grandma, who are both found some very difficult diagnoses this week. And there's a lot this family has to deal with right now. So we pray that they will lean on you and trust in you and walk with you, Lord. We pray for peace in a world where Every day on our phone, on the news, in the newspaper, we hear about one battle after another. Shootings in the street. So many things we wish we never did here. We just pray for peace, Lord. And I lift up the folks in California who have been dealing with flooding and, and that atmospheric rivers. Strange things happening in our environment. And we pray, Lord, that you would help them in this difficult time. Thank you that you hear all of our prayers, the ones spoken and unspoken. And thank you that you hear that we do want to follow you, Lord. But sometimes we're hesitant in certain ways, so give us the courage. Give us peace inside. Lead us, guide us. And thank you for loving us. Let us join our voices now in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. our resources, all that we do. So let us join together in our offertory prayer. Taking up our cross means many things, and sometimes it means giving more than we plan, whether it be our time, talent, or treasure. Help us to be willing to take up that cross as you call us so others will know they are loved. Use this offering to further your kingdom, for we ask this prayer in your holy name. Amen. This past Thursday, we had our first Lenten service, and a few of us were there, and I think it was really nice. Right, Sandy? And my daughter preached, and um, not just saying this because I'm her mom, but she was great. <laughs> she was really, really good. And we're going to make sure that the services each week go on our Facebook page, okay? Because these are all, all but one, I think, are students seeking ordination, looking for calls. So it's pretty exciting. And um, it's Thursdays at 1 o'clock, and the schedule's out on the board out here. Um, today we're having choir practice after worship. And Monday morning at 1030, we'll have Bible study in my office. And the papers for filling out for the search committee questions are at each door, so don't forget to fill them out. 
Next Sunday, March 3rd, there will be a chicken barbecue meeting. And um, sorry, I went ahead on the Lent services, but Spring Davidson will be the leader next week. And we're hoping to fill up the church with flowers again, because Easter will be here before we know it. And I have one last announcement. When we were talking about Monday, Thursday, one day, somebody said, we ought to do the Tenebrae service again, where everybody, a few people took a part. And um, I said, sure, we should do that. Now, those of you who were there know that we had, I believe it's one, two, three, seven parts. And um, different, it's called Voices from the Cross. There's Judas, Peter, the Roman soldier, Thief on the Cross, Mary Magdalene, Joseph of Arimathea, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And seven I think it was all ladies took part and did an absolutely wonderful job. And I thought it'd be nice if we did that this year for Monday, Thursday. So if anyone is interested, come up to me and let me know. I have the scripts with me so you can start, you don't have to memorize it. And I have costumes from the nursing home that you will wear and, um, and props. And you just have to read it. You don't have to you know, memorize, because I don't memorize. <laughs> we never ask anybody to do that. <laughs> but um, if anyone's interested, come up and let me know.